Let's start here. Have you noticed how wonderfully, remarkably patient God is with us? You just stop here. I want you to think with me this morning. Have you noticed in your life, Christian, how remarkably, wonderfully patient God is with us? How as we go through the course of our lives and we, we not only do well but not so well, how we not only clean up but we make messes. I love that language. How remarkably patient he is with us. We hear through the scriptures this morning from the Old Testament this, this call to Ezekiel and the rest of us to be open and, 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 and loud and, and loving about warning people about their need for the Lord and, and what life without the Lord might mean for them. And, and then in, in Paul's word to the Corinthian Christians, showing them about this, this conforming life in Christ and how when the people of Israel didn't conform, how difficult it became for them. And Jesus telling this, telling this remarkable story, this parable about, listen, about how he has dealt with the people of Israel. He came and he spent three years proclaiming to them, giving them opportunity to be the ones who heard with their heart that he was actually the Messiah, the one who could heal them and, and bring them new life, this patience of the Lord. In your life and mine too, over and over again, if we're watching, if we're paying attention, we see the same cycle. God not only calls us as his children, but he abides with us. And so in the course of your living in mind, the week to weakness, the day to dayness of our lives, as we, and I'll, I'll repeat this for you, as we do well and not so well, as we clean up and more importantly make messes, this, this God who has loved us with his life continues to love us and abide with us and put up with us and forgive us and call us and renew us. This morning, this morning our subject is one that is part of the fabric of every believer's life. Listen, it is absolutely woven into every day of your life and mine as we follow and belong to Jesus. All of us know, or at least we should, or, or maybe we need to, that the subject that Paul takes up for the Corinthian Christians is also for us. That Listen, the temptation, this thing called temptation, is a reality in the life of every single Christian every single day. You see, what, you see what God has, Satan wants. Let me repeat that phrase for you. It's an important one. Listen, what God has, Satan wants. It's been true from the time of the, of the turn of Eden and it's true all the way till today. As God makes people like you and I and Adam and Eve holy before him in the blood of Jesus, as we become his precious possessions in Christ. So the goal and the aim of Satan is to take away from what God has claimed for his own. It is the ongoing work, though we, we, we hardly see it with these eyes or perceive it in the ordinariness of our lives, but it's true, it's the ongoing work of Satan that what God owns and possesses, he wants for his own. In fact, what he does in life, listen to me, what Satan does is works at it. It is his goal to draw you and I away from the Lord. He wants to undermine our trust. He wants to discourage us. He wants to shrink our faith. He wants to grow our doubts. He wants us to think in terms of maybe God doesn't love us as much as we've heard or forgive us as completely as we've been told. Satan's goal is little by little, bit by bit, piece by piece, not in loud and clanging ways, but in small and subtle ways to move you and I away from this, this Lord who has claimed us as his own. He wants in your life and mine over and over and over again to somehow reach into our hearts and souls and take away from us what has been planted in us by the loving work of Christ. I want you to hear this morning, Satan doesn't have the power to reach inside of us, but he has great power to work outside of us. And so in your life and mine, this is the ongoing reality. This is part of the fabric of every day of our lives. Satan comes and he will use all kinds of temptations. They are, they are meant to, to draw us away from the Lord. And listen, he always starts here. Like he did with the people of Israel, Paul records that the first place, the first lostness that was 
given to us as a warning was the people of Israel got caught up in idolatry. They, they thought that this worship of God was something optional for them, or they could set the terms for it and do it in their own way, and so they rose up to play, Paul says, which is the biblical way of describing this lost idolatry that had become part of their lives. Listen, in the same way, this is the first place that Satan goes after you and me. He'll say to us, loud and clear, you don't really need this. Okay, you need smaller doses. Well, a little, a little of this is okay, but don't get carried away. Oh, you're, you're good. This week, you're good. If you want to cuddle up in your blankets and roll over, go for it. You're all right. And then, because, listen, because he doesn't have perfect knowledge, but he has learned knowledge. He watches your life and mine. He learns where we are vulnerable as people. He will go after us in every place of that vulnerability to draw us away from the Lord. So in your life, he knows. Child of the kingdom, listen to me this morning. Satan knows where you're vulnerable. He knows where you are the weakest. He knows where you are, you are the most open to him. He knows where he can get at you the best. In my life, too. And he's going he's to continue to raise up these things the Bible calls temptations. Place them before us, all in the hope, in the longing to draw us away from the Lord. Because that's true. Because it is profoundly true in your life and mine. The Lord tells us and promises us his beloved claimed children. That he will provide for us what we need to face Satan's temptations. In fact, he tells us, now listen, the first place of his provision is not, listen, is not easier temptations, it's greater ability. In other words, in your life and mine as his children, as he teaches us through his word, part of his teaching us and growing us as his children is that God is helping us to be able to discern what temptation is. That might sound trite on the, on the surface. It's not. As, as we grow in the Lord, as we are taught through his word, as his children, part of what God is doing is he is helping us to be able to recognize what temptation is when it comes along. I'll go back to the one I mentioned before. It's Sunday morning. You've had a long, hard week, and you're tired, and you'd like to just roll up in those warm blankets and stay there. In fact, Satan is doing the whisper thing. Doesn't that feel good? Just, you just stay right there. It's okay. It's all right. As you, you and I mature in the Lord, part of what we come to, part of his gift to us is this greater ability. God empowers and enables his children to hear that voice, to see that reality and go, no, wait a minute, wait a minute here. I know where this is coming from. I know what it's trying to do to me, what it's trying to say to me. This discernment, listen, this discernment of what temptation is. And along with that, loved ones, this is such a gift. God promises his children strength to resist. It is, it is the strength of his presence with us. And so the temptation comes into your life and mine, whatever the face of it happens to look like. And by the power of the Spirit, we recognize that it is temptation, number one. And then number two, we have the promise the Lord is right there with us. He is providing the strength for us to resist. Say no. Uh-uh. Nope. No, I will not. No, I won't. He gives us this gift. Listen, he gives you and I the gift because he doesn't want to see his children hurt. He knows way better than you and I do, loved ones, that every time we give in to temptation, though we may try to delude ourselves into thinking it makes no difference, God knows every, every giving in to temptation hurts his children. And he doesn't want his loved ones hurt. Not, not only that, hear me this morning. God also promises us that he will provide, when we're faced with temptation, he will provide a way of escape. There will always be a divine back door. 
I know that because I've said it myself. I know that at times when we're faced with temptation, we will think or say out loud, we've heard other people say it, I didn't have a choice. There, wasn't, there was nowhere else for me to turn. I had, I had no other choice than to. Listen, that's not what the scripture says. <laughs> God promises his beloved children that he will always provide a way of escape. In the face of temptation, there's always a divine back door. And I'll add this for you. Almost always, it is way more obvious than we think. God places a door next to us, in front of us, behind us. But listen, always close to us. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray. The words are familiar, aren't they? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We're praying about, listen, loved ones, we're praying about the divine back door. Lord, not only provide it, swing it open for me. And then give speed to my feet and courage to my back and focus to my mind as your children that I might walk through, no, run through the door. Lord, please. And he promised, listen, and God always promises. I will, I will provide for you, my children, this divine back door. I will make sure that it is exactly where you need it to be. And most of all, last and most of all, he has promised us as his beloved children in the, in the face of temptation, the cross of Jesus always remains for us. Because you know, I'll say it out loud, but we all know, temptation is going to come into our lives, and because we are not simply children of the kingdom, we're people. There's going to be more times than we care to count when it's right in front of us and we recognize it, and God's there to abide with us or provide a back door, and we fall into, we give into the temptation anyway. You hear me this morning. And for every one of those places in your life and mine, the cross of Jesus remains. For every time we give in to temptation, for every time we fall, for every time we fail, for every time we sin, the cross of Jesus remains. He always forgives. Oh, praise God. He always forgives. Between here and heaven, this is going to be true for you and me. Satan is alive and working, and you and I, and all the people of the kingdom, we are his target. His goal is to draw us away from the Lord, and his tool is temptation. So this is the help our loving God gives us. The strength to resist, a way of escape, and always, always the cross. For when? For when temptation comes. On this Sunday morning, this is the teaching of the Lord. If you would rise, please.